So to the nearest round number, zero people that are getting the most out of Microsoft 365. You might be losing stuff. You might not know the difference between OneDrive and SharePoint and Teams. You might be having Teams chats and internal emails and WhatsApps and Telegrams all flying at you. You might be losing track of projects. You might be not have a visibility. You might not know what your people are doing. If you're a leader, you might be just having back to back calls because you just replicate what you used to do now into a hybrid environment and there's no space in between meetings and you're just constantly on video calls. If any of that sounds like you, then you're in the right place. I failed at Microsoft 365 too until I understood what I'm about to tell you in this video. If you're new to the channel, I'm Gavin Jones from MeTime, where we help organizations save time for their employees, make their employees' lives easier, happening to use Microsoft 365 to do it. So if you're interested in working together, check out one of the links in the description below, including some free training if you want to get more out of Microsoft 365 and make it a better place to work at your organization. So I used to work in a corporate job before I started MeTime which had all of the same challenges. We had stuff everywhere, we had SharePoint sites, we had OneDrive, we had people sharing stuff and they didn't realize what they were sharing or opening up, permission issues. We had old processes from IT that had not been updated. So every time a new project started, they set up a new SharePoint site. And obviously then Teams came out in between and nothing got updated. So then there's people setting up Teams for their own little teams, there's Teams everywhere. There's OneDrive, when you put something in a Teams chat, if you share a file the wrong way, it goes into someone's OneDrive of the person that shared the file. Microsoft don't really help because they don't really care what you use as long as you're using a breadth of their apps, uh, then you know they don't mind how you work. And it all just leads to chaos and confusion. We in the corporate job were lucky enough to have Microsoft Workplace Analytics now called Microsoft Viva Insights, which is now getting rolled into Copilot. So even just the name changes in Microsoft sometimes are confusing. But it's where it scans everyone's emails and meetings, anonymizes them all. And then as an analyst, you can sort of roll it up and see, you know, are different populations of people working in different ways? Who's collaborating with who to get stuff done? Who are the linchpins that actually hold all the processes together? Really powerful. And then because we're working at Microsoft, we understood a bit more about how they're working internally. And obviously they're a massive company as well, as well as seeing some of the peers and things about how they're working. Short story, you don't actually need that because everyone's working in a very similar way, which is overusing email, overusing chat, and having too many things set up, too many places to lose things. And if you're like that, then you will never win at Microsoft 365. Even IT companies, maybe you've got an outsourced IT provider, they don't have not fully caught up to the realities of what I'm about to tell you. All the stuff they used to do, they're kind of replicating in the cloud. They're just migrating stuff into random SharePoint sites. And again, they're not helping you simplify your structure. Usually they're just moving like for like just to get it done. And that's fine. That needs to be done as well. But if you're in that sort of scenario, it's the next thing that I'm about to tell you, it's worth tidying stuff up in this way. Otherwise you'll keep failing with Microsoft 365. You'll keep losing things. People will still be doing lots of busy work. Emails and meetings are not your work. And so what we learned through Microsoft Workplace Analytics is everyone is just grinding to a halt with meetings and emails and that isn't their job. Everyone's going to halt like finding different files or managing different versions of files. Even though co-authoring is available and has been available for ages, people still are in the habit of saving down different versions of their files. They might not even know when and when you can't use co-authoring. So people will share a document and someone else is like, oh, do I need to download that to edit it? They don't realize that you can edit things live, whether using the desktop app or the web. And so they're downloading it anyway, even though they don't need to, changing it and uploading a different version. And it all gets very confusing. And maybe some of the things that I've mentioned resonate with you. Let me know in the comments below if they do, which one is happening in your organization, which one do you get the most frustrated about? Let me know in the comments below. And so, like I said at the start, it's not until you start going through this sort of change in a large organization that you really get 
the epiphany that I got, which is Microsoft 365 is never going to work for you unless you simplify everything that you could do into something that really resonates with a normal person doing a normal job that just wants to do a good job, come to work, do a good job and go home and see their friends and family. Unless you're focused on like making that the end game, not technology adoption, not any other metric, not how many how many hours people are in teams or whether they're wiggling the mouse and they're available now, especially now we're in hybrid working where you know you need to have more trust and be a better leader. None of that's going to matter unless you really simplify your tech stack because there's so many things that you could possibly do. We really need to whistle it down to the smallest number of things that are going to make the biggest difference, the least amount of effort, the least amount of resource, the least amount of cost to get the biggest benefit. And so the key, key insight, which if you have ever watched any of these other videos on this channel, may not be a surprise, but it's worth reiterating. Even if I'm on a big enterprise size client or whether I'm working with one to 10 people, the starting point is the same because it is so transformational and it takes a little bit of effort to get it done. But once you get this done, everything else is easier or irrelevant. Just while I remember, if you are a one to 10 person organization and you want more help after this video, we've got a Microsoft 365 Accelerator program, which is going great guns. It's soft launched at the back end of last year. It's getting more and more people from US, Canada, Kenya, Switzerland, UK, all around the world, people are joining and getting loads out of it where we go through all of this stuff and help get things done with you, help you learn all this and what fits best for your organization inside a group coaching program. If you're interested in that, then book a call using the link in the description below to find out more. If you're a larger sized organization, we can help out with traditional consulting and our first step usually is modern workplace recommendations where we'll come into the organization, run some workshops, find out the best fit of apps and processes. And you know, whether it's Microsoft 365 or not, we'll make sure that you've got a decent plan of what is available, which apps and processes are worth investing some time in and get you a decent return on investment. Like, is it worth doing anything at all is always the first question we want to answer. And if it is, here's what we would recommend investing to get this return back in terms of time saving, reduced onboarding costs, reduced turnover in staff, increased sales because we're freeing up salespeople by improving the back end processes. Usually if all of that sounds good and you're interested in that, then again, book a call using the link in the description below and we can help get you set up if we're a good fit to work together. But the key thing that you will fail at, that I failed at until I realized that in Microsoft 365 is you've got to think teams first because when you set a team up, it sets up so many other things in the background that if you don't have a really simple team structure, everything else doesn't matter. So if you're focused on like project management and you're maybe you're delving into different apps and thinking about different ways because you haven't got visibility of the projects, you haven't got accountability of the people doing the tasks. You know, I've been there before, like even people sending minutes around in Word or Excel or whatever app it is, you turn up to the next project meeting and everyone's like, oh, I don't know what I need to do. Have you done those actions? Oh, I didn't know that I needed to do them. They're just all lost in people's emails. And even that, the app is not the thing. It's if you can get everybody working in teams, create a digital equivalent of an open plan office that I usually say, that is the thing that's going to make the biggest difference with the least amount of effort. If you can just get into teams channels, the smallest number of teams you can have, the smallest number of channels you can get away with, everything lives there. If it's about this subject, it goes here and the files live there and the conversations live there. If it's about that subject, that goes there and the files live there and the conversations live there and everything is within one or two clicks away, whether it's a file or uh, another app or a task list, whatever it is, you want to make it as simple as possible for the people that are adding value in the company. You don't want to optimize 
for support functions, we want to optimize for the people that are adding the value, make it as easy as possible for them to get the information they need. Everyone knows what they're doing. And the digital equivalent of a plan office is people could overhear even one-to-one -one conversations in an open plan office if it's not completely private. That's what we want to replicate in Teams. We also want to have the ability of like going away and doing some work and focusing. We want the ability to do that in Teams channels. We want the ability to go into a meeting room. Maybe it's got a glass front. People could see you in the meeting, but they can't hear unless they come in the meeting room. We can replicate that in Teams as well. Teams sets up so much stuff in the background. It sets up a Microsoft 365 group. It sets up a SharePoint site. It sets up a document library. It sets up pages. It sets up a shared planner. It sets up a shared OneNote. Loop's about to come into team as, Teams as well. It sets up an email address. It sets up so much stuff that you don't want all of that digital clutter. We want the minimum amount of places we can go and put things. And to do that, we need to kill other things. We don't want any, once we've set it up, we need to not be accepting of working in a different way. If you had an SOP that went into SAP or you had you know, people logging things in your CRM, you would not accept them saying, well, I put it on a post-it note and stuck it on my desk. So what's the problem? No, you, if you're working a different way and it's affecting other people in the organization, you need to cut it out. So we don't have internal email if we've got a channel to do the same thing. We don't have a WhatsApp group if we've got a channel to do the same thing. We don't have a Teams chat if we've got a channel to do the same thing. Just getting into Teams channels with threaded conversations with the files living in that channel in a distinct folder structure is going to be the key unlocking the rest of Microsoft 365 and in that same project scenario that alone can one save meaningful amounts of time per person per week and we've got the data to prove it and two will automatically improve visibility and accountability without even having a project manager app and then when we overlay our getting things done methodology with planner to do lists automations approval flows that even supercharges that even further. And then all of that save enough time that it's a nice place to work and you can start thinking about more intranet-y type things, sharing information around the company, videos, pictures, text, the way you'd consume information in your personal life, all that's available in the same assets that you've set up when you set the team up. And so that's why we really want to focus on getting your team structure right first. The biggest thing, whether it's for an enterprise client, or for a smaller company, the start is usually the same. If you can get people working out in the open in Teams channels, smallest number of teams, smallest number of channels, you can get away with. Everything else is easier or irrelevant. You've already thought about the permissions. You've already thought about internal, external sharing. You've already thought about how people want to work. You've already thought about onboarding. You've already thought about offboarding. Everything's already thought about, and then everything else is really easy. You don't need to have a, a process of like, oh, maybe if someone wants to request a team or someone wants to request a channel, they don't know. They're normal people doing normal jobs. They have no idea about what things need to get set up. That's already thought of. And you don't then need lots of technical support and help to get things done and set up because it's all set up in advance. And if you can get to that, that will make sure that you don't fail with Microsoft 365. So I'm really curious about your experiences about Microsoft 365, whether you hate it, like it, whether you've nailed it, need some help, let me know in the comments below. And if you wanna get more information about our methodology, then check out one of these videos popping up or one of the playlist to get more out of it. And before you go, really help us if you give us a thumbs up, if you've got any value out of this video, click the subscribe button and the bell icon. We've got new videos coming out every week. And thanks for watching so far. I'll see you in the next one.